They put Bosch on Nowitzki. Seven to shoot. Nowitzki drives with a deep left hand. Layup banks it in. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Good day, good day, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Welcome to your weekly dose of old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends talking about Dirk Nowitzki and why they consider him to be the greatest European player of all time. But before we start with that, you know the drill. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, you guys, I would say let's do it. Now the first clip that I want to take a look at is a segment from NBA Open Court. They're talking about the stretch four and Dirk Nowitzki's impact with that position. Let's take a look. Can your main guy be a stretch four guy? No. Because Dirk, I mean, no. Dirk, I mean, because Dirk Nowitzki is the only main guy that was a stretch four guy that led his team to a championship. See, but I think Dirk is a little bit different. Yeah. I think Dirk and Kevin Durant, they're a little bit different because they get the ball. When we start talking about stretch forward, we're basically talking about who stands out there and opens up the court. Yeah. I don't think Dirk is a stretch four. Uh, I think Dirk, Dirk's a guy you get a ball to and let him go. Especially Dirk in his earlier years, you could put him at that elbow throw. line area or that pinch post. He did the fadeaway with the knee up where guys now, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, are copying him yeah. with the fadeaway. So he had a back-to-the-basket game as well. But on the flip side, he just so happened to be one of the best 6'10", 6'11", shooters our right. this game has ever seen. Now the next clip that I found was actually a very interesting one. It involves Kobe Bryant and Dirk Nowitzki, obviously. Kobe talking about how he wanted to recruit Dirk Nowitzki to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. And just the imagination of having those two players on one team, I think that could have been really special. Because I think that Dirk Nowitzki also from an ego standpoint could have dealt yeah, greatly with Kobe. But let's take a look what Kobe has to say. Yeah, yeah Dirk, Dirk and I have always had a great relationship um, because we're both extremely competitive and uh, also both extremely loyal to our teams. I mean, I'll tell you a story about Dirk. I mean, he was up for free agency and I knew what his response was going to be. But just out of respect, I said, dude, everybody's looking around at all these free agents. I felt I'd just shoot you a text. If you want to come to L.A., you know, it's, and he goes, uh, dude, I would love to play with you, but Dallas is my home. This is my team. I'm not leaving here. And so I've, I've you know, he and I think a lot alike in that regard. Your career is kind of intertwined with Dirk's because you played along the same timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were wondering, it can be international, it can be also in the NBA. What is your favorite matchup memory that you have with Dirk? Maybe a, a specific game. And in the NBA, he's, he's, you know, every time we've, I face him in the playoffs, he's always, he's always got me. So uh, he's always played at a, an incredible level in the NBA. He's He's even, you know, not that he played better than internationally because he played really well too there, but he had obviously a different, different setup, different teams, different league, and he's, he's done incredible. Um, so I'm just, it's one of the guys that I've always kind of tried to match up myself against and look up to and try to get to his level, kind of him, K, uh, KG, and Tim Duncan. One of the great scores in the history of this game. I didn't know how great he was until one day I'm, I'm at TNT and I saw that he passed me up on the score and I'm like, wait, he, and I had to go back and make sure that, you know, they weren't cheating me out. And then I had to look and I was like, man, he's really been consistent, especially after his, his second and third year. But will always be, always be recognized as one of the greatest Mavericks to ever play. Uh, coming back to Dallas for the second time uh, to, to be able to meet uh, the big German, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, was, I was in awe um, because you got to see him, you know, from afar and you hear about the things, his work ethic and the things he did, you know, on the court and, and how dominant he was. Now to be a teammate, I thought I was like a kid in a candy Hardest store. Hardest player in the NBA you defended. Hardest player? Hardest player. Defend. Oh, Dirk Nowitzki. And what? Over Tim and all of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because, see, I, could, I figured, yeah, 
So I figured Dirk out. I mean, I figured Tim out and KG out sooner than I figured Dirk out. Because okay. they would post up. What, so what did Dirk do? Dirk ran, ran in transition. He hit okay. transition threes. That's a prime he Dirk. He picked and pop. Yeah, pick and pop. Was a, you know, I thought Dirk was a better, you know, one, two, three dribble ISO player okay. than Tim and, and KG. Um, now, they had some other parts of their game that were tough. But, you know, just speaking of the three best players at my position while I was in the NBA, it was those three guys. And then, you know, Dirk was in the, Dirk and Tim were in my division. But, you know, because Tim would be more or less considered traditional, um, and I didn't have to guard Tim. He played more of the, he was a four, but he played the five more. So, uh, but I had to guard Dirk. Yeah. You know, and Dirk was like that hybrid four that, you know, was just impossible to deal Before with. Before the involvement of what the statue would look like, I already knew what the statue was going to look like. It had to be a fadeaway one leg. It had to be. No question about it. Dirk is a, he's a legend. He's an icon. Um, I think he's the greatest international player ever. Uh, put him right there with, with Manu. That boy was cold, man. Dirk was cold. He was you talk about like top power forwards, top players of all time at that position. He, he's right up there with like Barkley and Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, Kevin McHale, those guys. They tough. Dirk is tough. And you got, you can, you can, when you can talk about somebody with one name, you know he was tough. And Dirk was tough, for sure. Vince, I, you know, I mean, he doesn't seem to want to admit, like the NBA's put out, hey, it's Dirk's last game. They, he has not said anything. Yeah, he yeah. has everybody in, in limbo, like, uh, what, what is he going to do? I, I, I've tried, but, uh, you know. Is he hurt right now? That's, that's, that's Dirk Walk there, buddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's just it. <laughs> that's it. But it's, I mean, it's just great. I mean, he deserves to be honored. I mean, if it is his, his last um, unbelievable career, great teammate as well. Uh, We'll just have to wait and see. Talk about in the game evolving, and here's this guy, you know, seven feet tall, shoots it like, you know, Larry Bird, just can score, can beat you in so many ways. One of the most unguardable shots. Dirk Nowitzki. There was a narrative back in the 90s and that, you know, foreign players just weren't good. You know, they weren't good enough to play in the NBA. They weren't tough enough, you know, wh whether that narrative was fair or not, that was out there. And Dirk was one of the first guys as a young guy coming in the league, learning, gaining respect, getting better, becoming an all-star, eventually an MVP, eventually a champion. And I think changing that narrative. During our championship run, um, me and Dirk uh, was playing one-on-one, -on -one, right? You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, Cause we figured he's gonna be cross mass as well as I, you know what I'm saying, on multiple defenders. It was going to make it very interesting, challenging. So that was one of the funnest things we did. Though. We competed in practice and stuff, but we was able to really help each other. I remember there was my first kind of couple rookie games, and we played Dirk. And I remember I was like, dang, I'm playing Dirk Nowitzki. And the next thing you know, he's yelling, give me the burger. And I'm like, what's the burger? Oh, the basket, you know. The next thing you know, he gave me 32. <laughs> And I was so happy after the game. I was like, man, did you see how good he was? And my parents were like, Jenny, you just barbecued you. I said, what? It looks, there was nothing I could do. And that was the thing with Dirk. There's nothing you could do. Dirk battles. That's the first thing that come to my mind. Playing each other twice in the uh, NBA championship. You're going to walk away with some scars. You're going to walk away with a healthy version of dislike <laughs> and a healthy version of, of how much you respect and how much love that you can have for a competitor. I love Dirk as a career he had, and a career that is a legendary career that a lot of people still, once again, don't talk about. I love the fact that, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, that we get to go in the Hall of Fame together. And just to be able to compete against him and win, you know, win a championship in 06, that really solidified, like, my career and, and my talents. And then to watch him come back and win his in 2011, even though it hurt us as a team, as a fan of the game, I can appreciate what that did for the game of basketball and what they did for one of the game's greatest players. One of the most incredible comebacks in NBA Finals history. That one championship was enough. He'll neither win three, four, five. That one for him, um, the way he did it, the route to get there, 
That was special. You know, I covered it in a recent episode of mine talking about how Dirk Nowitzki turned into Michael Jordan. And what I mean by that is in 2011 in the NBA Finals, Dirk Nowitzki was playing out of his mind. And I got to be honest, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was thinking that I hardly have ever seen a player dominate in that way. He reached a new level. He literally was on a level of a Michael Jordan and Larry Bird in that final series. And you hate, no hating. You got to give the man credit for this performance. It was out of this mind and that actually turned him into one of my favorite players of all time because I love players that rise to the occasion. Anyway you guys I hope you enjoyed this episode don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel and comment if you enjoy the content. See you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.